This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance purposes. Uh, we do ship Canada. You do not have to run Canada. If you want to run Canada, you can get, uh, as long as you have a passport, they will put you in the rotation for Canada and, you know, put you on a, a rotation list. Um, and then as far as the Northeast, um, I mean, there's certain states we frequent more than others, but uh, I, I know that, you know, they don't expect some one driver to run that area all the time and, and let the others not. Okay. Uh, Welcome, drivers. Check it out. Today's MTC, we about to jump into fresh to you transportation out of Oberlin. If you guys like to hustle and don't worry about getting paid every two weeks, this might be the company for you. John, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, I remember getting a voicemail, and I think I left a message, and yeah, we missed each other. Uh, all right, cool, awesome. So um, I like to start by uh, I like to start by saying that I saw the 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 post on Facebook, and uh, okay. You know, I went into the comment session and a lot of people was kind of asking some good questions that wasn't getting answered. Um, I was and I was oh. just, I was just kind of curious that um, that I may get some information for myself and my and my tag team partner right here. Uh, and being that you guys are from Ohio and I'm from Ohio as well, I would like to start by asking are we able to take the trust home if I'm old, if I'm from Cleveland, Ohio? No, the, all the equipment has to come back to our facility in Oberlin. Okay, okay, which is not that far. It's right outside of Lorraine, right? Um, yeah, it's just south of Lorraine. Um, we're and if you're familiar with where Oberlin is, because we are actually right on twenty, right, um, right at the intersection of five eleven and twenty is where we're at. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so would this be, so if I'm out of Ohio, so would this be more of a regional position for me if, if, if I'm, if I was to come home every week? It is a combination. All of our drivers run both local and regional. Um, there are three peak seasons during the year that our drivers are running predominantly local. Uh, not to say that there, there may be an regional mixed in, but it's predominantly local, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan. And then in the off-peak seasons when they're running more regional, which can be anywhere from the East Coast up to the, uh, east of the Rockies. Okay, okay, okay. So what about, what, what about, what, what you say East Coast, what about uh, the Northeast? Anything up there? And if so, do we have, will we be, uh, what do you call it? Will, will we be forced to go up there? Um, we do not force dispatch, but if somebody is consistently turning down loads, then there may be, you know, somebody may be talking to you. Um, our goal is to, our drivers drive at least 2000 miles or about, about 2000 miles a week because a lot of our regionals are even 800 to 1200, 1500 miles. Uh, there are some that are a little further, but in general, our drivers are home, you know, they're probably not out more than three nights. Uh, we do ship Canada. Do you do not have to run Canada? If you want to run Canada, you can get uh, as long as you have a passport. They will put you in the rotation for Canada, and you know, put you on a, a rotation list. Um, and what? then, as far as the Northeast, um, I mean, there's certain states we frequent more than others, but uh, I, I know that you know they they don't expect some one driver to run that area all the time and, and let the others not. Okay. Uh, there's pencil, you know, I know there's a lot of Pittsburgh freight, um, and how far up in the Northeast. Um, I know we do some Connecticut. I know we do some Jersey. Uh, uh I don't know anything. I don't think anything up towards New Hampshire or Maine, but I couldn't say for sure. Um, okay. that's something that, you know, the, the specifics would probably be best discussed during an, or an interview. How much, how much experience you guys are looking for? I got seven. My partner got two. Well, we don't have we don't have team driving, so it would be solo only, um, and we want at least a year experience. So, other than that, um, 
Well, we just don't have team, team freight. Okay, that's So they fine. don't do it that way. That That's fine. That's okay. fine. Uh, what about the, uh, what, what's the, uh, mileage, uh, mileage pay? So I can give you kind of the lowdown about all of it. Um, if you would like, um, okay. But and I'll answer your questions first, but, um, uh, just to kind of give you, are you familiar with, have you ever heard of fresh to you transportation before? Uh, coming from Facebook, this is the very first time that I ever heard of you guys because, like I said, it okay. was it, it, it was posted in our in one of our groups uh, that uh -huh. that you guys popped up, and I was like, oh, okay, here's you know another company that's from Ohio. I'm from Ohio, but I haven't heard of you guys. So, okay, and most people haven't just because. Um, and you're from Cleveland, so you may you may be familiar with or have seen on the news uh, and maybe an article about green circle growers. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Okay, okay, so yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that that's how the Facebook thing uh, was working. So I, I I'm not sure, you know, if somebody else was, was commenting, but it was it was a lot of comments in the in the chat session. It just wasn't, uh -huh. get, it, it just was nobody was, you know, replying back to them. So I, right. I guess. In other you, words, there was a lot of people that was inquiring about it. They right. saw the ad, but there was nobody responding from the ad, from the, the company itself back in the ad. So that's why I still need to, because I don't want, you know, people asking questions and then not getting a response from us thinking that, that we're just not responding. I don't even see those. So right. I've got to talk to my advertiser about that. Not a problem. So a my problem. apologies for no one answering you. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so you, and you said you are you had you had heard of Green Circle then? Yeah, I heard I, I have heard of them. I, you know, I, I came across okay. and, you know, I came across in uh in, in hearing, I've never seen anything about them per se, but okay. I have heard of them. Okay. Well, just to kind of fill you in, and, and the reason I ask is just to kind of give you, to see what you do or don't know about us, because Fresh View Transportation is a the private fleet for Green Circle Grows, if you want to look at it that way. We actually have three companies in one, uh, Green Circle being, I, I like to refer to it as the mother company. It was the original company founded. Um, and then they had a division called Express Seed, which supplies baby seedlings and seeds to other customers, cuttings, things like that. And then Fresh to You is the transportation side. We haul all of the freight in or outbound for Green Circle, or we handle all of it, whether we put it on our own trucks or we are using brokers or owner operators to, to move what we don't have the capacity to do. Um, so Fresh to you, Green Circle Growers is uh, been in business over 50 years. It's family owned, family ran, second generations overseeing operations at this point, and I think third generation is even starting to step in. Um, we have over 150 acres of greenhouse growing space as well as additional land. Um, so we really are quite a large facility. Later, if you get a chance, you can always um, Google Green Circle Growers and you get, get to, like the Google Earth view, and you'll be able to see how large the facility really is. Um, we are on 5, 11, and 20. Um, we actually supply over 33,000 plants to, uh, or plants to over 33,000 stores across the United States and Canada. So to kind of give you an idea of how big, big we actually are. Um, with that addition of our last greenhouse, it put us among the top 10. We're like number two or three in the largest top 10 greenhouse growers. Okay. So that so, kind of gives you just a little input about the company. So you Go guys, ahead. so you guys are like, uh, like, plant-based only uh freight correct right? oh okay yes Interesting. well not not totally only so anything going out of our facility is plants you know um but but back, of course the, the, back the, i can't talk back hauls can be just about anything gotcha. um no 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 hazmat and usually because most of the time you're running refer trailer um, you know, it can be produce, it could be, you know, meats, or it could just be a, a, a load that you're not going to use the reefer unit on. So it just depends. So do you but get all of the outbound freight? Oh, I'm go sorry. Go, go ahead. All of the outbound freight. I'm sorry. It's just all of our outbound freight is on the lighter side. 10 to 25,000 pounds is usually going to be the heaviest you're going to haul out of here. 
Mm-hmm. Um, any backhaul can be, you know, up to the, the industry standard or as, as, as far as the maximum that you can put on. But generally, obviously, just like anybody, you try to get the lighter loads, but that's not always <laughs> the option. So, so do do the do the backhaul as far? I mean, for you for your backhaul, do you, do you guys go on a DAC, mm-hmm. do you guys go on a, a broker board or DAC board, or do you guys use um, your own? Generally- you your own client yeah. base. So we we have a lot of our customers in the places that we run. Yes, we a lot of times we're just picking up product for the you know customers that are either bringing product back to us or we're bringing product back that we're going to cross dock with our product and deliver for them. Or sometimes it could be just not even coming back here. It might be just like a brokered load or um, uh, well, I guess you'd say it would be a brokered load. Um, but more often than not, you know, we always try to work with our own customers first, but if we don't have something coming out of that area, then they will broker a load to get you back towards home. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. So with that said, what, what, what will be the, uh, mileage pay or do we get paid mileage? Uh, it's actually a combination. So I will tell you up front that our drivers, Pay is really a performance based. Each driver has the ability to drive how much they're going to make to a certain degree by just what they do. Um, it is, and, and probably I should just kind of touch on a couple things before I get too heavily into this to make sure that everything else about the position that sounds appealing before we waste time on pay structure or any of that. So uh, you said you had, would you say seven years? Yes. Okay, and then your your partner has two? Yes. And you guys are okay with splitting up as a team? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. Um, so I'm assuming since you're running together now, you both have driven sleepers? Yes. We're we're not we're, okay. we're not team we're not teaming now. You know, my my uh, my partner, which is you know a good friend of mine. You know, he he's mm-hmm. in, he's interested in running teams. So that's why I asked okay. him in the beginning. But no, we're we're not gotcha. running teams. But yes, we we have we drive sleeper trucks, yes. Okay. All right. And then you, you both live in the Cleveland area? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you're okay with the combination as I mentioned earlier, running some local, some regional, just depending upon the, the season? Yes. That's that's it's, okay. it's interesting. Yes. Okay. And and just to kind of give you an idea, so generally, you know, when we're running local, you're pretty much home every night. can be longer nights or longer days, but you're pretty much, you know, potentially you could be home in, in your own bed every night. Um, with the occasional regional, there might be mixed in. Uh, when our drivers are running more regional runs, those are generally... Worst case scenario is we don't uh, probably three nights out would probably be the longest. Anything more than that would be an unusual circumstance. But just know that there, you know, there is a potential that something it could be longer on a rare occasion. But most of the time it's out overnight or you know a couple of nights, and and sometimes it might be into three nights. But anything more than that would either be something unusual occurred or you volunteered for something that was a longer run. Okay. So. Is that a concern for either of you? No. Okay. And then the other thing is that the freight is, I guess you'd say, semi-touch. Um, when we're running regional, you're pretty much doing just distribution kind of stuff, distribution centers or greenhouses. So distribution centers bump a dock 99% of the time they're offloading. Um, if you're delivering to our direct-to-store customers, um, which are really like Home Depot, Sam's Club stores, or other greenhouses that we raise plants for, that's when you would be doing more of a touch freight. Um, but it's not touch in the respect that most people think, oh, well, I don't want to touch every single box and put it on a dolly and cart it into the store type of a thing. Uh, it is plants, as I said before. They are put on carts. The cart's got wheels. So when you bump the dock, you're pushing the cart off into the building. Or if it's warm, you're going up to the garden center apron, you're using a lift gate to lower the cart to the ground, and you push it off to the side in a, in a holding area, and then you go around back and you pick up empty carts and you go to your next stop. So you're paid for mileage, stops, and carts. 
Okay. So, as I said, our driver's pay is a um, performance-based. The driver can affect what they are going to make to a certain degree just by always making sure they always bring back maybe a, a full trailer empty carts, maybe doing some cart runs, maybe doing um, you know a longer haul here or there. So that being said, um, before I jump into the whole pay structure, the one thing I, I try to always point out to everybody um, – well, first of all, I, I'm probably not your typical tr- recruiter because I've actually driven a truck. I I'm, I'm, can really relate to what drivers have got to deal with and kind of have a feel for what they like or don't like just because I've been there, done that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is the best coffee I've ever tasted. Um, so it's important to me to be very transparent about the position and I, and just from talking to different people, I could say that, you know, I don't only want to tell you the good things about the position, but I want to tell you some of the negatives so that you can make an informed decision on whether this is a good fit for you. Cause it does us no good to have you come in and start a position that, you know, we've not told you about something and then you not be happy about it. So that's why the conversation is always a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so then the one thing that I find that probably is maybe the, the least appealing to most people um, as far as if they're looking at what's the one negative about this position is that it is an inconsistent work schedule. So it's not like you're going to be working every week, Monday through Friday, you know, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's not what this is. Mm. You, and being in the trucking industry, you already know that freight kind of really dictates what happens and when it's happening. So I can tell you that there are certain times of the year that there's a more consistent schedule, and then there's other times of the year that it can be a little more all over the place. So when we're in a peak season and we're delivering mostly Home Depot stores, those are usually a 7 or 8 a.m. start with the delivery when it's cold when it's warm and the nights are consistently above 50 degrees then our drivers can leave whenever they want with the load after it's ready here and start making deliveries what we call night deliveries a lot of guys like to do that because it saves them on traffic they miss traffic miss the heat of the day um you know weather is sometimes they can get ahead of that so it enables them to have one more control over what they do and two it can save them time on their day um, that's what a lot of guys like to do. Um, but again, that's just to let you know that this work schedule can fluctuate depending upon whether you're delivering at home depots or if you're going to garden centers, um, or if you're going into distribution centers, distribution centers are probably the most inconsistent because they're all different. Some want them, you know, only take deliveries wee hours in the morning, some all day long, some are only in the evenings. So is that going to be cons- Uh-oh. Hello? 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 You there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You just yes. went you just went blank there for a minute. But uh no, that sounds oh, you, lose me. <laughs> you 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 there? I thought I was losing you. Oh, okay. Uh no, the every everything you said, the, everything you said and everything I'm listening to sounds interesting. So I, I guess okay, well, the, bra- the brass test of, of everything is how much do we get paid? <laughs> Right. And that's where I'm going now. I just wanted to make sure that those things, I, I like to get them out of the way to make sure because, you know, if, if none of those are acceptable, then there's no reason to go forward. So pay is biweekly direct deposit. Um, just to give you an overview, all of our drivers last year who were in this position uh, with us for a full year made over 100000 uh, Multiple drivers or uh, they, I guess if you take it to a weekly average, it was about 1960 bucks is a weekly. Um, I do want you to understand that there are ebbs and flows. There are some times where you might be over that, and there might be some times where you're a little under that. But it will average out throughout the year to be around there. Oh. Um, mileage pay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I, was, I was saying, okay, I, I'll wait till you finish before I, I retort. Okay, so the pay structure is is three things. I guess I would like to say we have a base annual goal, uh, and that is for our drivers to drive 100,000 miles through the year. You're paid all miles loaded or empty. 
to do approximately 750 stops throughout the year. You're paid $14 for every stop. And to bring back roughly 5,800 empty carts, you're paid $3 for every empty cart you bring back. So as an example, you did just those three things, drove 100,000 miles, did 750 stops, brought back 5,800 empty carts, you would make a bare minimum of 66,000. It only goes up from there. Um, we have an annual retention bonus. It's paid out every year in July, a lump sum amount of 10,000. If you drive the 100,000 miles through the year, it's strictly based on the mileage. As long as you drive the 100,000 miles, you'll get a full lump sum check every year in July of 10,000. If you don't, then it's prorated according to how many miles you do drive. Um, I will let you know that for transparency purposes, our pay per mile is below industry standard. They start at 38 cents a mile. 90 days you go to 39. One year it's 40 and it continues up from there. But our pay per mile is not just the mileage because you're you're paid for all three things, the cart stops and mileage. So those is what adds up together to be your pay. So as an example, if you added that 10,000 to the uh, base goal, you're looking at 66 with the 10, it's 76,000. So if you drove only 100,000 miles, you made 76 cents a mile as an example. Does that make sense to you? Uh, I'm following. You kind of lost me at the 38 okay. cent, though. <laughs> okay. It does. And, and that's why I, I explain it like I do, because a lot of people, they hear 38, and they're like, well, I, I'm making 60 cents a mile running, co you know, uh, regional or over the road. Yes, but all you do is you get in your truck, you bump a dock, you pick up your load, you go to your next, you know, your, your delivery location, you bump the dock, they offload it, and you get another load, and you do the same thing again. Our drivers are actually... In a lot of cases, they're making those deliveries. They're offloading the cards and stuff. So we compensate for all of that. So, 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 it, so basically, it's not just the mileage pay. I, Go ahead. I think I, I, I think I can, I can correlate to what you're saying. So, you guys figuring that if we just drive, we're we're at thirty eight cent a mile, but since we're doing the extra work. We're going to pay you as a worker as well. Right. Does that it's sum like a long distance everything? delivery guy, if you want to call it that way. Yes, you can look at it that way. And, and, that, and some people do. They say, well, we're long distance delivery drivers. So you're paid for all miles loaded and empty, but you're also paid for your stops. You're paid for the carts. So all of those three, three you can't look at just the mileage because that's only a third of your pay. Because the other two things are also part of your pay. For every stop you're going to make, you're getting money. For every cart you bring back, you're getting money. So as an example, I have some drivers that will bring back 10,000 carts a year. So that's $30,000 alone just in carts. Oh, okay. Uh, you, okay. Also, you, you, so, also, you also lost me at the, the biweekly pay. So <laughs> yeah. you, you figure, so you, 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 you figure if, if I'm to understand you in the beginning, you said that we can we can average somewhere around $1,900 a week. So that'll be mm -hmm. like, be like close to like 4, four, like four grand every two weeks, give or, give or take. That's gross. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. That's yeah. Getting, getting used to biweekly pay is, is, is something to definitely get used to. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, it does it in the beginning, but <laughs> now here's the thing. As I so the way I explain the base pay, do you 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 comfortable with the understanding of that? Um. Yeah. I I I I get it. I I understand it. Maybe maybe a little. Okay. You know, maybe a little more. You know, if we was to go any further, you know, like well, orientation, maybe a little bit more one on one, and I can actually. Oh, absolutely. It. And see, and yeah. We, yeah, I can actually visualize because right now, you know, right now we're just in conversation and I'm just trying to visualize everything right. via conversation without seeing everything flat out on paper. Well, and, and here's the other thing. And then there's someone because I, I start with the base because we, we compensate our drivers for just about everything they do, with the exception of a pre and post trip inspection, fueling or a 30 minute break. Those things are considered part of your job. Back whenever I drove, um, 
if you did a backhaul, that was just part of your job. There was no extra incentive or anything on that. If you um, stopped to get your truck looked at because you were noticing something, that's part of the job. We compensate our drivers for so many things that are part of the job, but it's things that eat into a driver's pay to no fault of their own because it's things that have to happen. So uh, when I say we compensate our drivers for just about everything, we really do, other than those pre- and post-trip inspections, fueling, and 30-minute break, those are part of your job. We have an assessorial compensation that we um, is, is very generous in, in that what we do, and so I want to go over some of that with you so you get a better understanding of how not only with the mileage or the base pay or what I call the mileage stops and carts, how our drivers are making over 100000 is because it's a combination of that as well as how we compensate them for their downtime of things that's no fault of their own. So as an example, right off the bat, they're going to give you an automatic $30 per pay period or $60 a month will automatically be put in your pay because you use your cell phone for work purposes. Um, they will give you $500 per quarter in a safety performance bonus, which is you know, doing your job safely, getting your paperwork turned in on time, um, no CSA violations, no preventable accidents or typical safety stuff. Uh, you get 500 per quarter if you achieve that. Um, and then if you make all four safety bonuses for the year, they give you a bonus of 500 for making all four safety bonuses. So potentially you can make $2,500 just for doing your job safely, getting your paperwork turned in regularly. Um, clean DOT, DOT inspection, you get a level one inspection with, you pass with flying colors, you turn in that paperwork, you're going to get a $50 gift card. You get a level two or three, you'll get a $25 gift card whenever you turn in the paperwork. And there's no limit to that. Um, if you choose to get in the rotation for a Florida or Texas load, whenever you run that run, you'll get $200 on top of whatever the load pays you in mileage and stops and so forth. If you volunteer for Canadian trips, um, they'll put you on the rotation. You get 150 on top of whatever the load pays in mileage and stops and so forth. Okay. Um, we also have a backhaul pay and a layover pay. And I'll explain you a scenario where both of those would come into play just as, so you have an example. Um, let's say you were going to deliver in St. Louis, Missouri today. Dispatcher, let's say it's a 3 o'clock delivery. Dispatcher calls and says, hey, i got a back call for you, 30 miles from where you're delivering, uh, but it don't pick up till 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So needless to say, not such a bad thing if you get there and you're almost out of hours, you know, okay, fine, I'm going to go park and wait for a load tomorrow. But what if you still got six hours on your day? Now you're losing money because you got to sit and wait and pick up that back call, which is not fair. So we say... When in this scenario, once you made your delivery and you drive over to where you need to be, you're going to get $225 because you have to lay overnight to pick that back haul up. Once you actually get the back haul on your trailer and you're heading out, you get $150 for the back haul load. So you're getting $375 plus whatever that back haul load pays you in mileage and stops and so forth. Okay. Another scenario where the layover would come into play is let's say you're on a two stop run. Let's say the first stop holds you up, and by the time they're, you know, you realize, well, if they don't get me out of the door now, I'm going to be late for my next appointment. So you call dispatch and you say, hey, I've been sitting here. I'm not, uh, you know, and of course, when you start approaching two hours, we want you to let us know anyway. But as an example, um, let's say, you know, you call and tell them, hey, I'm still sitting here. They haven't got me rolling. I'm going to definitely be late for my next appointment. So dispatch will then get with whomever they need to get with, and they'll call the company up and see if they can get you worked in whenever you do get released. If it's not feasible and they can't work you in and you have to lay overnight to finish making that delivery for the next day, you know, they give you an appointment for the following day, that's not your fault. You'll get 225 for having to lay over for that as well. Okay. All okay. right. That's all. That's... All right. Then we have... Uh -oh. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> okay. I got you. Uh, unless you got a question. Nope. Nope. I'm I'm listening. Okay. All right. All right. So detention pay. Industries typically the industry standard is the first two hours is on the driver. Anything after that is paid at an hourly rate. Only problem is if you're on a load, let's say it had three stops, each one of them held you up two hours. 
you've lost six hours out of your day and you got paid nothing. That's not fair to you either. We look at detention by the load. And so basically the same scenario, three stops held up two hours at each. In our case, that would be considered you were detained four hours on that load. The first two hours are on you. The other four hours are paid at your hourly rate. Our hourly rate starts at $23 an hour. Once you uh, are done with your training and you are assigned your tractor, you go to 24. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. And then once you, uh, 90 days from that date, you'll go to 26. So, um, generally, depending upon how fast you pay things up, usually orientation and training is about two weeks, give or take. Um, orientation is a couple of days. The rest of it is, is just training, and that all depends on how fast you pick up things and, and are comfortable with everything. You and your trainer will decide when you're ready to be on your own. Okay. Um, then now, we have now you say as far as I, I, I have to go out with I, I I will have to go out with a trainer regardless of the fact of how many experience that I have out here. Only because of what we do is different. Um, it, so the, usually the first two days is orientation with me. Then they will probably have you work in the warehouse with a. Uh, with the loaders there so you can get familiar with the securing of the carts because it's a little different, um, as well as reading the labels on the carts so that when you make go to make your deliveries, you understand what you're supposed to be pulling off and what you're not. Um, they may have you work with the jockey for a day or two so that you can get familiar with where all of our buildings are, where all the dock doors are. We have one, two, well, I don't know how many sets of docks, probably six or seven different sets of docks. Some buildings have two different sets. Um, and we have about one, two, three, four, five buildings. Um, literally, when I say we take up tw uh, 5, 11, and tw uh, 20, we do. <laughs> um, from the corner of 5, 11, and 20 uh, going west, we have a greenhouse that stretches about a quarter mile, plus our facility still extends beyond that. Um, and then going down 511, we have three different buildings there. One is devoted strictly to orchids. Um, and as I said before, we have over 160 acres of greenhouse space, not including our buildings and the rest of the land we have. So it does take a little bit to get familiar with things. And then so generally about the first week is getting familiar with everything around here that you need to know. The next week you're going with the trainer. First day or two, he will generally... Um, do the driving, kind of explain things because of the, the paperwork, what all needs to be done, processes, what we what's required of the driver. Um, then he'll give you the driving seat, and he's pretty much going to be there as a, a guidance if you get stuck on something that needs to be done or assisting you with showing you how to rotate the carts so that you're not handling them any more than you have to, to rotate as you offload your, your product at a stop and you're picking up empties. Um, so there's, there is some stuff involved. I mean, if it was just your, your normal um, bump a dock, you know, get the paperwork, go, um, would not be necessary. But what we do and we and our paperwork is a little different. We have two different kinds of bill of lading. So there's a lot of information to go over, and we want to make sure that you're set up to succeed. So we do have a little bit more of a training program than your typical trucking company would be because we're not just a trucking company. We're handling the all of the sales for our company itself. Okay. Okay. Right. That's a lot. All right. That's a lot so, on. That's that's a lot to eat off the plate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, okay. like I said, our drivers, our drivers do have to work a little harder than your normal, you know, driver that's just running across the country. But they are compensated as well as well. Gotcha. Uh, this year, uh, last year was a little less, but the year before in 2021, uh, all of our drivers made over eighty thousand. Uh, multiple made over a hundred thousand, and one guy even made over one hundred and thirty. Okay, that's what's so, up. That's what's up. Yeah, in twenty twenty two, the whole COVID thing, man. I mean, we were just booming all year round. Um, and then last year was still a great year for us. We still had growth. Um, it just wasn't quite as many longer hauls. You know, there wasn't uh, just wasn't quite the, the same. But they all still did very well. 
Right. Um, on top of the, the additional accessorials, um, if you had to offload a pallet for some reason, you're paid five dollars for every pallet. Um, if you had to break pallets down, for instance, I know, and most of the distribution centers don't want you on their dock anyway, but just FYI, um, if you had to, let's say you pulled three pallets off at a, a, at a Walmart distribution center and maybe there was mixed product on the pallets. I don't know if you've ever delivered to Walmart yet, um, but oh, they don't nice. want mixed Okay, so you, you know how they are. Oh, well, we don't want all one pal- product on one pallet. You have to break it out to the different products. So if you had three pallets you pulled off and ultimately it broke out to six pallets, you would be paid $5 for all six pallets. All right. Um, what about... A breakdown. So, go oh. ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Continue. Continue. I thought, okay. you were, I thought you were So finished. if you break down, no, no, <laughs> I'm basically telling you, and, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions as you go, but I pretty much try to um, basically fill you in with everything that I would think I would want to know if I were looking to drive for a company. A you know, I drove, in, I've, I'm, I'm drove before. I, I don't know if I mentioned it or not. I have probably 30 years in the industry, somewhere between 25, 30 years. I drove solo. I ran a trucking company. Uh, for seven years, I went back out and drove as a team. And even before driving solo, I was a dispatcher. So I totally feel or understand this whole process. And, and like I said, I've just pretty much try to give you everything I would like to know if I were looking to drive for a company. Cause I know that sometimes it, recruiters, you feel like you're pulling teeth to try to get information out of them. And I figure it's just as easy to be transparent and tell you everything up front so that there, if you decide to move forward with us, there's no surprises. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's the way to be. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. You know, I'd rather spend the time here on the phone and, and let you really decide if it's something you want rather than telling you a couple bits of stuff, getting you the door. Maybe there's one thing that we talk about that is just not something you want to deal with. You know, so exactly. that being said, um, breakdown pay, it will start from the moment you break down until you're up and running again, up to a maximum of two twenty five. You're paid hourly. Another neat thing is if you are driving and you know as well as I do, when you've driven your truck for a while, you can tell by the way it feels or the sound that there's something going wrong or something just ain't right. So if you notice that there's something going on, you're just making a vibration, you got this weird noise. And you want to stop and get it looked at rather than waiting till you're on the side of the road down and dead in the water. Um, we have no problem with that. So if you're going to do that, you let dispatcher, or well, your dispatcher or your fleet manager know, hey, I'm going to stop and get this looked at. Um, and when you get there, you document your time. They will pay you your hourly rate while you're getting your equipment checked out to make sure it's, it's better to have you stop and do it there than be on the side of the road somewhere. So we pay you for your time for that. Um, we have what we call per diem pay, a little different than whatever I drove, but nonetheless, it's still extra money going in your pocket. Uh, our per diem works like this. Uh, for every second night you're out and each night thereafter until you're back, you get an additional $35 to help offset the cost of trying to eat out there on the road. Also, if you're on a load that has you out, you'll also start getting layover pay of the 225 all right okay okay any uh, questions about any of the pay structure uh no you're you're you you're you was pretty much straightforward with it so i i you know i <laughs> i uh i i pretty much get get the pay uh get the pay structure now um okay. so with 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 that out the way <laughs> that is a lot to take in and a lot to eat off the plate. So, but I, I, well, and- I see now, <laughs> I, I see now, you know, the 38 cent. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see where all the additional money is coming from that's coming into our pockets. So that might mm-hmm. make up for, make up for a lot of, uh, of, especially a lot of misunderstanding about the 38 cents. So thank you very much for that. Right. Um, well, and okay. I'm glad I was able to explain it because uh, a lot of people, sometimes as soon as they hear 30, I've had people hang up on me, but you know, if you give me the opportunity to explain, because there, there is what I, and, and it's kind of what I say, it's your base pay plus all your accessorials will easily add up, you know? Um, 
Don't look if at you, don't don't look at more moment. Don't don't look right. at the bottom end. Look at the look at the overall. Pretty much, right? Right, the big picture. Right. Don't the look at just picture. the mileage. Look it, at the big picture. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, so what about uh? So uh, with all that said, what about uh? What, what about coming in for orientation? Now, let me ask you this. Uh, what's the pre-employment mm -hmm. drug screening? Like it's a hair follicles or urine and how would you get us there? Now I know I'm out of Ohio, so I'm kind of assuming that I will be driving, but for, for, for people that stay out of town or out of the area, how would you get them there for orientation? Or do you guys just have a radius that you hire within? Generally, because because of the local freight, we pretty much have the radius. We generally want our drivers within 60 miles, give or take. I mean, you know, especially because, you know, if you're when we're in spring shipping and those can be some long days, um, they can be a 10 to 14 hour day, depending upon weather, traffic, you know, what time you get started, all of those things. Because um, so if somebody lives more than 60 miles away, you're looking at least an hour drive. To work plus your 10 to 14 hour day and then your hour drive home unless they decide to just which i do have some guys just crash in the truck here until next morning and do it again rather than go home um but in general we want our people to to live within now we do have um we have like four drivers in florida and two drivers in texas but that's they're running florida you know they're basically coming out of their home state bringing product up to us delivering and loading back out and going right back down. Um, but that's because we have the volume of loads that are going in and out of those states for us. Um, we have the volume of people. Uh, right. In the other states, we don't we don't have a need to do that. Um, so in, unless we pick up customers in other areas that we're going to be bringing product on a regular basis back out of, we would not be looking to bring on a, a driver in another state for the most part. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, drug screening. Okay. Uh, yeah, they do a pre-hire. Um, generally, it's just your, your your typical urine test. All right. Do you guys accept? Uh, and I'm uh, before I ask that question, I see you guys. Uh, by mm -hmm. the sounds of everything, you guys is running a very tight knit tight knit ship over there. So. You guys are looking for predominantly looking for good professional drivers. So I guess the question that I'm going to ask you now is, do you accept SAP drivers and or felon uh, felon drivers? Um, they do do felon depending upon the circumstance, what type of felony. Um, and the SAP, I would have to say, it would depend upon the experience that the person has um, in the past, I, and that's something new. We have new HR, so I'd have to check and see if they're willing to consider. Um, they had in the past that didn't really turn out too well, so I don't know if they're going to continue to do that. Gotcha. All right. What What are the equipment of the uh, What are the equipment and what are they governing that? And do they have driver cameras? Okay, that was my next <laughs> subject I was going to go to for you. So tell you about the equipment. Um, yes, we have all international tractors, all automatics, um, 73 inch raised wrist sleepers. Um, they're all four or five years old or less. Governed at 70, no slip seating. Your tractor is signed as yours. Um, there are inverters and they have easy passes. Um, our newer tractors that we got delivered last year and the ones that are coming in this year will all have gear guards, refrigerators, and the driver's seat upgraded to the top of the line for that model so the comfort stays better longer. And we do have outward and inward facing because we are self-insured. Our insurance companies require it. All right. Uh, Petten, well, Petten. All right. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, so then the trailers are all 53 dry vans and reefers with e-track and lift gates about on half of the fleet. Uh, we have a 24-7 roadside assistance contract with Penske. So if any of our equipment goes down, driver calls an 800 number. They get somebody out to take care of them. Um, we use the Motive electronic logs. And um, coming April of this year, 
probably by the end of April, 1st of May, we will have our own on-site fueling. Okay. Um, where where do you guys yeah, where, we, where do you guys allow us uh, allow the drivers to fuel at? Like? Uh, pre- preferably pilot and fly and J. Not to say that I mean obviously there's certain circumstances are uh, occur that you you need to go elsewhere then so be it. But uh, that's where they prefer. Um, once we get the on-site fueling, most cases you'll be able to just fuel here. You won't even have to bother with a truck stop unless you're doing one of the the much longer hauls. Because I believe uh, generally in most cases our runs are like 2,500 if you're doing a, a regional, a longer regional, um, about 2,500 and miles. And our trailer or trucks all have uh, 100 gallon or dual tanks, so 200 gallon tanks. Um, and to answer your other question, uh, we do not have a rider policy um, just because of our insurance with the nuclear verdicts out there. They're kind of put a, a, a kibosh on that for a while. They do allow a uh, PAP policy. Um, they haven't put anything in full-blown writing as of yet, but they do allow drivers, if they wish to take a pet, they just need to report it to the manager at this point. Um, I will say that they are working on developing a policy just because we don't want to see somebody sticking a Great Dane in the front end of the truck thinking they're going to go down the road without any problems. Um, okay. So there will probably be a, a you know, size or weight limit on, on that. Um, but other than that, um, what else can I tell you? Oh, electronic logs. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Motive or what used to be called Keep Trucking? Uh, I'm familiar with keep trucking. Yes, that's that's off. The, you you can get the app on your phone, right? Right. Except the drivers don't have to put the app on the phone for us. We have tablets in all the trucks, so they got a much bigger screen to work with. Uh, but it, it, keep trucking uh, recently changed their name to Motive, so it's one and the same. <clears throat> and if there's no other equipment questions, I can go on and tell you a little bit more about the freight and then the benefits. Uh, sure. Go ahead. I'm all ears. Okay. All right. Well, as I mentioned before, our freight is generally on the lighter side, 10 to 25,000 pounds. It would probably be the heaviest you'd ever haul out of here. Um, right now we're in what we call our plug season, and that's when we're sending baby seedlings out to uh, other greenhouses. Can I take your order? Can I get a tall chai? And a large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti. Yeah, the biggest one you got. Venti is large. No, venti is 20. More often during this time, drivers will deliver on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday just because those plug customers need the product there. So when their employees come in on Monday morning, they have product to work with. They're going to repot those into flats and so forth to sell after they raise the plants a couple of months. Um, then in spring shipping, which will kick up around mid April, through about mid-June, that is the busiest time of the year for us. We can have 75 to 100 loads a day going out. Uh, There is a blackout for time off just during that period, just because of the volume of freight. We need everybody available, and it's throughout the company-wide, the restriction. Um, But after mid-June, things will slow a little bit. Pick back up again around mid-August through uh, about the first week of October for our mom season. And then it slows down a little bit, picks back up again around mid-November and through Christmas for points out of season. Last year, we did just under 2 million points out of. Um, I don't don't have the count for last year's um, uh, mums, but I know in 2022, well, that would have been, no, it was 2021, we did like 3 million mums, I think it was. So it's busy as well. We're busy year round. It's just you know, a season where everybody's buying a certain kind of plant. Um, And we have, we're busy year round regardless because we also have an interior plant line and the just add ice orchid is our uh, about probably 30 to 40% of our sales. And I think they were saying about 40%. Um, So anyway, during these three peak seasons, you're predominantly driving, driving mostly Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, maybe a Wisconsin or Illinois, but it's predominantly, you know, local, uh, with an uh, occasional me- regional might be mixed in. Uh, it's mostly de- delivering direct to store Home de- Home Depots, uh, maybe some Sam's Club stores, and maybe other greenhouses uh, and the distribution mixed in around. Uh, predominantly, you're figuring roughly a 10 to 14 hour day, potentially. Um, 
generally I like to tell everybody you assume you're working Saturday and if you're off, it's a bonus. Um, we'd rather tell you to expect to work and be able to tell you you're off than telling you you're off and at the last minute time to tell you you got to cancel your plans, we need you to work. So we just say assume during peak seasons you're working Saturday and if you're off, then it's a blast. Um, in between those peak seasons is when you're usually doing more regional freight, even though there might be some local mixed in. Um, that's when you're running anywhere from the East Coast up to the uh, east of the Rockies. Uh, there are certain states that we more frequent more than others. Um, but any any time during any of the seasons other than spring shipping, if you need a day off or you want a week off or whatever, you just put in your PTO request, you're pretty much going to get what you want. If you give at least a two-week notice, you will 99.9% of the time get what you're scheduling off. If it's less than that, we always, always try to make sure we make it happen for you. But if it's a very, very short notice, it may not always happen. And um, an example would be, you know, maybe on Wednesday, your relative calls you and says, hey, I'm going to be in town. You haven't seen him in 20 years. I'm going to be in town this weekend. Um, you know, don't assume that you're not going to make it. Um, just let dispatch and your manager know, and they will do everything they can to make it happen. If it, if it's a busier time, if they haven't already scheduled you for something, then, you know, because we generally try to dispatch about 24 to 48 hours in advance. So if you haven't already been dispatched on a load, then they can avoid just not putting you on something. But if you've already been dispatched, then they got to try to make sure they got somebody else to cover it. So, they will do everything they can. We just can't say that if it's a less than a two-week notice that it's 100% um, that we would be able to make it happen, but we will try. Um, so I mentioned earlier, probably 30 to 50% of the time during uh, during the year, you might work uh, the weekend. Uh, not that it's going to be the whole weekend. It might just be, you know, depending on where your load's delivering on Monday, you might have to leave on Friday if it's a longer run or Saturday. Um, or Sunday afternoon if it's a closer run, just to be where you need to be for Monday morning, or you might even be leaving early Monday morning. It just depends upon the load that you're on and where the first stop is at. Um, you will always be off at least two days a week. Our goal is that we will run our drivers. Basically, you might run a short run and then a long run um, and then another short, just depending upon how your hours is. Our goal is always make sure that just before you're out of hours that you're back here at our facility so you get your 34 reset at home. There will be times when you, after your reset, we might need you to run again, like in spring shipping, you know, right after 34 hours, we're going to need to be probably having you assigned on a load. But if we're in a, uh, in between peak season or something, then it might be, well, it might be a full two days or maybe even part of a third day before they have to send you back out. Um, but again, we always want to make sure that you're always home for your reset. Those two days will not always be the same just because it's going to strictly be based on when you're about to run out of hours. So that's going to fluctuate throughout the week depending upon how your hours are running. So I uh, know that that can change. Um, but our goal is to make sure that you're off two weekends a month. Um, sometimes it, it may be every other weekend or it might be back-to-back -back weekends. Uh, we always suggest, especially if the driver is making their their mileage goal, which is basically 2,000 miles a week. If you're making that mileage goal every week, um, they're going to try to make sure that they have you off at least two weekends a month. And I always tell drivers, hey, if you've worked two weekends in a row in the dispatch, I, 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 Monday morning I'd be telling dispatch, if you really want a, the weekend off, I'd be telling your dispatcher, hey, now I've worked the last two weekends, don't forget – uh, just because they get really busy sometimes and, and get a little absent-minded. Uh, so, you, you know, you got to give them a little helping hand in that aspect sometimes. Um, other than that, um, any questions about the freight or how we run it? No. <laughs> okay. One other thing I can tell you that some people like and some people don't, but it's not forced, is that we have – what we call agriculture exemption. Are you familiar with that? No. Okay. Uh, just FYI, uh, it's strictly up to the driver if they want to use it. It's not mandatory for anyone, uh, but it's basically it was designed for farmers and stuff to get their crops in so they and, and, and to market before things got messed up. So we are considered agriculture, you know, plants can deteriorate or die in transit and so forth. So we are considered the agriculture and can use the ag exemption. 
and it can be used for two ways. One is as long as you're staying within 150 air mile radius from the distribution or from here, um, technically you do not have to run a clock. You can technically drive 24-7. We do not want you doing that, um, but that's how the ag exemption works. So basically, we have drivers that during a busy season, they'll run two loads to Pittsburgh. So one, they're making more money, and two, because they're able to, um, they're, and it depends on what part is Pittsburgh, because the, the west side of Pittsburgh, you can, you can run two lo- loads there and back and still be within the 150 air mile radius. Uh, the ones that are a little further east, then I think there's two stores that's just out of the 150 air mile radius. But basically, as long as you're staying within that area, you do not, you, you still, we still want you to run the clock. You'll just put it under personal conveyance ag exemption. Um, but it doesn't count against your 70 hour rule. Oh. And then the other part, yeah, eight day 70 hour rule, you could drive for seven days a week. And as long as you stay within a 150 air mile radius and you, you're going to always have your hours. Okay. So, um, uh, but we don't want drivers driving tired either. So if a driver has ran hard, you know, maybe, you you know, maybe three days you you ran two loads back and forth to Pittsburgh and on the, you know, you get in on the the third day and you tell the dispatcher, Hey man, I'm kind of feeling a little tired. (laughs) Uh, Can I just have one load tomorrow? You know, please, we do not want you running and jeopardizing your safety or, or, or anybody else's by overdoing it, you know? Um, And then the other area where that ag exemption can come into play is, let's say you are going to be outside of that 150 air mile radius. You can leave our facility, run your first two hours, roughly 150 air mile radius. So you run your first couple hours on ag. um, And then once you get to that point, you stop and you, you go out of agriculture or you end your personal conveyance. And then you you log in as a driver. You'll show your pre trip, and then you'll go ahead and run your run. So basically, if you're let's say you had an Upper Michigan load that would you know you're going to be definitely out of the air mile radius, so you're going to use that leaving here, so that by the time you get done, you get up, make your deliveries, and you're coming back, you won't run out of hours before you get back potentially. Um, the other thing is is like if a driver is uh, runs out of hours on a day and they're heading back in here. If you're coming into our facility, they don't typically want you to use the ag coming back. But if you're, it's the difference between you sleeping two hours from here in the truck or getting back here and going home and sleeping in your own bed, you can run it. You just need to let dispatch know that you did so that we can make sure you have your true 10 hours off before we send you back out. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, okay. thank you. Right. So that, uh, oh, oh, mm-hmm. you, oh, you still got Go more? Uh, well, I can tell you about the benefits if you'd like. Uh, oh, okay. Benefits. Go ahead. <laughs> Twist your arm. Um, all right. So from day one, when you start upon hire, you have six major holidays. Um, and then we also give you three floating holidays. So those are just days, a special occasion for you that you can use as a holiday. Uh, birthday, anniversary, whatever you want to use. Um, and then we have vacation is... Um, it's prorated when you start your first year, and then once you're here for a full year, you get uh, a total of 16 vacation and flex days. That's 13 vacation days with three flex days plus the three floating holidays. So ultimately, year one through two, uh, you get 19 PTO days plus your your six major holidays. Um, the, for example, if you, and and as I said, it's prorated your first year. So let's just say, for example, you were to start this month and it kind of goes down each month depending upon when you start. So if you started this month, sometime this month, you would have, uh, after you've been here 90 days, you would have 11 days vacation to use before the end of the year, plus your three flex days, plus your three floating holidays, plus the six major holidays. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any questions about the holiday or flex or vacation days? No. Okay. We have medical, dental, and vision. First of the month after you've been with us for 30 days, it will kick in. Um, depends upon what you're looking for as far as uh, plans, but they have three different plans to choose from, depending upon deductible and premium that you're looking for. Um 
group life insurance, accidental death, dismemberment, short-term disability, company pays for all of that, long-term disability, and additional life insurance are available for purchase if you wish to enroll. Excuse me. There is, if you're on our, uh, if you enroll in our medical plan, then they also have a, what I think is called health joy benefit, um, which is a kind of like an employee assistance program uh, that helps you with, uh, you can do online medical cons consultations, um, prescription savings, uh, they can help you with medical bills, advocacy, uh, you can have a benefit uh, virtual wallet where all your Benny cards and stuff are on as well as part of the employee assistance of that is they have short-term counseling, financial counseling, legal services, things like that, all for free as part of this extra program if you're enrolled in our medical. Um, and then the last two things I cover is our bereavement policy and our 401. Um, they are uh, above industry standard as far as I'm aware. Um, immediate family member, you can get up to five days bereavement pay if one of those members should pass. They will acknowledge not only what most places considered your immediate family, but as well they acknowledge in-laws and step, uh, stepbrother, stepchild as a immediate family member. And so if any one of those people should pass away in your family, you get up to five days bereavement pay. Um, they also acknowledge extended family members, which is kind of unusual, but if you have an aunt, uncle, or cousin that were to pass away, you would could, could get up to day, uh, two days bereavement pay. Um, how about a smoothie? What's in that? Smoothie's a juice drink. We want coffee. Buddy, relax. Um, 401k. Uh, are you familiar with how vesting works with 401? Yep, sure do. You don't have to go into okay. detail about that. All I right. know. <laughs> Okay, then after you're with us for 90 days, you can enroll in our 401k. You what are 100% vested. Now, let me Go ask ahead. you this. What if I already have a 401k? You can, um, whatever company you're with, you can either roll it over into this one, depending upon the, the, the policy of the, the plan that you are currently have. Okay. Um, so you can roll it. Or you can roll it over, or you can just keep your other one and just leave it as is. Just don't continue to contribute to it and start this one. Okay. So let's say if I do decide to to, to keep uh keep the one, would 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 you get? Would yeah. I still have to wait that that uh? Would I still have to wait for you guys to uh to start uh coming in, or would it be right away since I already have it? Well, um, with ours, it's 90 days, regardless, everybody, um, that you can, you know, after you're here 90 days, you can, you can enroll in advance, but it won't kick in and start deducting until your 90 days is up. Okay. Um, so what, for instance, before I worked here, I had a, a, a 401 and, um, I just, it, they, because I didn't contact them to do anything with it, that company had rolled it into an IRA and left it as an IRA. Um, when I started here, I started with their 401 and I just left that as it was, you know, it's still sitting there. I just didn't do anything with it, but it's still, well, <laughs> I don't know about right now, but it still was growing money, <laughs> but with the whole economy these days, um, but with ours, you can start contributing after you've been with us for 90 days. Um, you are fully vested 100% upon enrollment and we match up to 5%. At one hundred percent, or dollar for dollar. Right. Okay. Okay. Which is kind of unusual. Usually, when a company's matching a hundred percent of five percent, they usually want a year or more vesting period. But um, they are very good about trying to help people, you know, grow their savings and so forth. So you're, you're vested from basically the day you 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 can enroll. Right. Okay. So that is the majority of things I usually cover. There might be something I might have left out for most part, but no, is that's there good. anything that, I didn't cover that you? Hey, if 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 I was to go for it, I'm sure we would cover a a lot more during orientation. But right here, yeah, this this is very good information. I will definitely definitely take this with me. I will share it with my partner as well as uh as well as other people in my Facebook group because this I I want to tell you I want to I, I appreciate the 
the time that you took to explain the company because a lot of a lot of recruiters don't just want to get you in the door and don't want to tell you but the bare minimum so they can get you in the door exactly. um well and, and and just know this i know i gave you a lot of information uh but i don't expect you to remember it all and i usually say this in the beginning and i apologize for not telling you but basically I, I prefer to give you a lot of information so that you can make an informed decision on whether this is going to be a good fit for you. I want to be very transparent. I want to answer as many questions as I can that that are deal breakers for you or us up front. And if everything is good after the deal breakers are discussed, then if we move forward, there's no surprises. Exactly. You know, you, you know that so, and, and know too that, with all this information, there's no way you're going to remember it all. But I want you, you know, to, you've got my number. If you are explaining or you get stuck or you have additional questions or you need me to elaborate on something I covered before, feel free to call me. I have no problem taking the time to explain things. I, I much rather make sure you have a good, you know, understanding everything before you even come in for an interview so that those things that are, you know, that are more you know, freight specific and things that I maybe not be able to answer as well as a dispatcher or a driver manager can are, are out of the way. And then the, that saves the room for during that interview to be other things that you need to know. Thank you very much, ma'am. So, okay. One, one thing for me, if I can, Sean, sure. um, so how's it, how do you feel about it? Is there something you think you might want to move forward with or, I I, I, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to I'm, I'm definitely going to think about it. Uh, uh, the, comp, the company that I'm with now, you know, and the amount of money that I'm making now is definitely going to be, uh, you know, a, a di- uh, as you say, a deal breaker. So, yes, mm-hmm. I uh, I definitely will think about all of this and uh Okay. And and I would like I said, if anything should work out for me in my favor or anybody that might be interested, I would definitely pass it along and have them to give you a call. Well, there you have it. Fresh to you transportation. If you guys stayed this long. That means that you're interested and that you're vested. This recruiter, driver, uh, dispatcher, owner, operator, 30 plus years in the game, knew exactly what you drivers are looking for know exactly what your drivers are interested in full transparency no beating around the bush let you know from the jump of how the pay structure is how the benefits is what kind of trucks you be getting how you be driving and where you be driving to shout out to fresh to you this lady recruiter didn't fast talk didn't cut you off anything you need to know about she will explain it to you and if she hasn't she will give you more at the orientation now, a lot of stuff that was kind of a turnoff, she pretty much went over and kind of turned it back on. You basically get paid for everything you do. Everything you do. And even if you don't do it, you still might get paid for it. You get paid for the stops. You get paid for touching. You get paid for driving. They feel that fueling and doing your pre and post trip, that's part of the job, which I still think you should get paid for because you're on duty doing it. 
But in most cases, straight across the board. Her top driver, 130K last year. Top drivers. This sounds, this, this right here sounds like if you're a hustler and you want to hustle, this company right here. This company right here. If you the type of driver that want to do like two or three loads to PA and you and, and you're a runner, this company right here. They also are agricultural exempt, meaning that you can go into PC and put in agricultural exempt and you run without HOS violations. Damn good coffee and hot. And the only turn off is to pay every two weeks. But you figure you get about four, maybe 45 grand. That's about $9,000 a month. $9,000 a month. Some of you guys want 10000 right? Let's 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 break that down. Nine thousand dollars a month. Nine thousand times twelve. That is one hundred and eight thousand dollars a year. Come on now. If you're a hustler and you, you don't mind getting paid every two weeks, then fresh to you, transportation might be that company. If you're interested in fresh to you, transportation, definitely, definitely check out the information in the description below. Let them know lockout men talk to you. I mean, talk to them or talk to you or whatever, sent them over to them or however you want to tell them how you found the information. Again, shout out to the recruiter of Fresh To You Transportation. Thank you very much for the time, for the extensive information so that us drivers can make an informed decision if you're interested in driving for fresh to you transportation. Until next time, everybody. Who's next? next, next, next.